we want to welcome everybody and wish you a happy Passover. Uh, Hag Pesach Sameach, a Zisin Pesach, as my grandma Frida would say. Um, this is a very unusual situation. Usually on Passover, we're all together, sharing a meal together, sharing stories, and and having our families, multiple generations of our families come together. We're in a time of distress right now, and we can't do that. What we can do is be with each other virtually, which isn't ideal, but um, it's what we can do. And so Don and I wanted to come from our Seder table to yours. Um, maybe you're having a Seder, maybe you're just having a nice dinner. We wanted to offer to you a very simple, uh, very simple laid out Seder. We'll hit the basics, we'll have a little conversation, give you a little time for conversation. And this is something that you can use to accompany your Seder if you would like. Um, we want to thank my friend and colleague and teacher, Rabbi Amy Scheinerman, who has shared with us a Passover a Haggadah that she created some time ago. Um, and it's got all the basic elements and it's very easy to follow. And that's what we're using today. So we're just going to kind of switch off our conversation and we're going to get started. Welcome to our Seder. Tonight we observe a colorful and joyous festival that our people has celebrated for nearly 2,000 years. The history of our people reaches back nearly 4,000 years. We began as slaves in the land of Egypt. Today we are free people. Long ago our ancestors set out on an important journey. On nights such as this, they went forth out of Egypt, leaving behind slavery and degradation. On nights such as this, they rejoice in their newly found freedom and dignity. Tonight we celebrate their freedom and ours. At the same time, we remember all of those who are not yet free. May this Seder kindle in us a zeal to work for the freedom of all. May this Seder inspire us to light the torch of freedom and dignity for all the world. We begin with our festive candle lighting. Don, would you light the candles for us? Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu v'hadlik ner, Shel yom tov. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy with commandments and commands us to light the, the festival lights. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has kept us alive, sustained us, and enabled us to celebrate this joyous, joyous occasion. Tonight we drink four cups of wine. Our tradition abounds with explanations of this custom. It has been said that the four cups represent the four corners of the universe where we seek freedom everywhere. It has been said that they symbolize the four seasons of the year for freedom must be scrupulously guarded at all times. It has been said that four cups represent the four ancient empires that tyr tyrannized Israel and has since passed away, for tyranny will pass um, once away once and for all when the messianic dream is realized. Our sages taught that the four cups of wine symbolize God's four promises to save our people. I will bring you out, I will deliver you, I will redeem you, I will take you to be my people. We can also think of the four cups as representing four types of freedom. The first cup represents physical freedom, the most basic freedom of all. Our ancestors could not accept the covenant of Torah while they were in Egypt because as slaves they lacked the freedom to determine the course of their own lives. Not all Jews in our world are truly free to live as Jews. We dedicate the first cup of wine to all those who still seek their physical freedom and safety. 
as Jews, it is our responsibility to help them. This Seder night, we ready to dedicate ourselves to that sacred purpose. May we soon share our freedom and our joy with all our brother. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Praised are you Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. I should also point out that on Passover, we like to get all the pretty fancy stuff out. Um, we celebrate the Seder by performing the mitzvah of Hidur mitzvah, of beautifying, glorifying the mitzvah, whatever the commandment is. And so we get out the silver kiddush cups, we get out uh, a lot of things that we got as wedding gifts mm -hmm. all those years ago, our, our Seder plate and our Elijah's cup, um, gifts that people have given us over time. Um, and these things are not only beautiful, but they remind us at our Seder table of the people who have loved us, um, the people we have loved and had the blessing to have in our lives. And so as you share your Passover tonight, think about the things that are on the table and where they came from and who gave them to you and when you used them. Uh, maybe some of the people in the past who have been around your Seder table who meant a lot to you just some, some things to remind you of what it means to be together on a day like this. So, Don? Carpas, it is spring, the air is growing warmer, the trees are budding, flowers are blooming. Pesach is a springtime holiday. The Carpas remind us of springtime and hope. Sometimes we despair of the evil in our world. Pesach calls us to keep hope alive and blooming. Now we dip the carpas in salt water because, does anybody know why? Very good, because tears taste salty. We not only remember the tears of our people in Egypt when they cried out when they were slaves, we actually taste them. May we never be so comfortable that we become complacent, forgetting the pain of others. So we're going to dip our carpas into the salt water. Would you hold up, again, another gift from from dear friends that we have had in our lives. Here's for you. Um, everybody generally uses parsley. Um, we are actually using cilantro because we like cilantro. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pri HaAdama. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth. It's good cilantro too. Now, we're going to go to the matzah, but just for a moment. And this is the afikoman. There are, Don, would you lift up? There are three pieces of matzah here. We're going to take half of the middle matzah to be our afikoman. Afikoman is the dessert or the after. It, it comes from the Greek. And it's, it's, uh, it has something to do with the way the Greeks used to end their, um, their great banquets. So we're gonna snap that in half and we're going to wrap half of it up and put it away for later. The afikoman is literally the last taste of what we have at the end of our Seder service. And we say, Halach Anya. This is the bread of suffering with which our people ate when they were enslaved in Egypt. We invite all who are hungry to come and join us. We pray that all who are slaves will soon be free. Don? More questions. Passover is a very special holiday. We do many things differently during Passover. Should we sing? We're gonna sing the four questions and then we'll we'll share them in English with you.
אנו אוכלים חמץ ומצה, חמץ ומצה, הלילה חזה, הלילה חזה, כולו מצה, שבכל הלינות אנו אוכלים שער ירקות, שער ירקות, הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מרור, מרור, שבכל הלילות אין אנו מפעילים, אפילו פעם אחת, אפילו פעם אחת, הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתהיו בעמים, שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים בין יושבין ובין מסובין, בין יושבין ובין מסובין, הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובין. So, those are the four questions, and by the way, We know there's lots more than four questions that you should be asking at the table. It's a chance for people to ask anything and to try and talk about getting some answers. So, Don, why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat both leavened bread and unleavened bread. Why on this night do we eat only unleavened bread? Oh, that's the answer. Okay. Um, that's one of the, that's. That's one of the reasons. Okay. And what's the next one? On all other nights, we eat all kinds of herbs. Why on this night do we eat especially bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not usually dip our foods even once. Why on this night do we dip twice? On all other nights, we eat while sitting up straight or reclining. Why on this night do we only re recline? We're not going to necessarily um, answer all of these questions right now. These are the questions to keep in mind as we go through the story of our servitude and of our exodus and of our redemption. This idea that um, we, we have certain foods, we have certain ceremonies, we have um, certain things that remind us of our past and certain things that remind us of our present and future as we go from slavery to being free people being able to, uh, to have a meal that's really a feast, to be able to recline as free people used to do in the days of the Greeks and the Romans at their banquets. Um, and as we go along, you'll, you'll figure out how we're answering these four questions. The number four is very important in the Passover Seder. Um, and another thing that we talk about is four children, four types of children. Remember, this is a time to make sure that children get answers to some of their questions. And on four occasions, the Torah instructs parents to teach their children the story of the Passover. Thus, the sages inferred that there are four types of children. Wise children ask, what is the meaning of the duties, laws, and rules which God has commanded? Such children should be taught everything, for their minds are open to learning about appreciating our heritage. Wicked children ask, What does this service mean to you, to you and not to us, to me? Since such children cut themselves off from the community of Israel, we respond, I do this because of what God did for me when I came out of Egypt. For me and not for them, for had they been there, they would not have left Egypt with us. Simple children ask, what does this mean? To them we say, with a mighty hand, God led us out, led us out of Egypt out of the house of bondage. To children who do not know how to ask, we begin by explaining that our Torah commands, you shall tell your child on that day. The four children represent attitudes more than types of people. All four children are in each of us. Each is a face we sometimes show. And so that's how we begin our story now. God's unfailing help has sustained our ancestors and us. For not only one enemy has risen up to destroy us, but in many generations, people have risen up to destroy us. But God delivers us from their hands. Our story begins with degradation and ends with dignity. May our lives and endeavors end as our story in glory. And so here's the story. 
Approximately 4,000 years ago, our people were slaves in Egypt. If God had not brought us out of Egypt, we would still be slaves there. Every year we retell the story because it is our people's story and because it is wonderful to tell. We also retell the story each year to remind us of the importance of human freedom. The story of our people's exodus from Egypt reminds and reassures us that freedom is possible. Deliverance can come. Salvation is within our reach. May we in our lives help the dream of redemption become a reality. Nearly 4,000 years ago, there was a famine in the land of Egypt, of Israel. Our ancestor Jacob took his family and settled in Egypt, where there was plenty of food. The children of Jacob lived well in Egypt. They became a great nation, powerful and numerous. Sometime later, a new king came to the throne of Egypt. He feared the Israelites because there were so many of us. He said, if there is a war, they will join our enemies and fight against us. So Pharaoh forced our people to become his slaves. He ordered us to make bricks and build buildings for him. Taskmasters were set over us. They imposed heavy labor, and we built the cities of Piton and Ramses. We cried out to God for help, and God heard our plea, saw our suffering, and responded to our oppression. God remembered the covenant with our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Pharaoh refused to let us go free. So God brought 10 plagues to the land of Egypt, blood, frogs, lice, insects, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the slaying of the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. When Pharaoh's own son died, he finally agreed to let us go. Rabbi Aaron, Aaron Samuel Tamarat of Milotes explained, God alone ex executed the judgment of death, for I will go through the land of Egypt in that night. I am not my intermediary. The Holy One, blessed be God, could, could have given the Israelites the power to avenge themselves upon the Egyptians. But God did not want to sanction the use of their fists for self-defense even at that time. For while at that moment they may, might merely have defended themselves against evildoers, by such means, the way of the fist spreads through the world, and the end defenders become aggressors. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be God, took great pains to remove Israel completely from any participation in the vengeance upon the evildoers to such an extent that they were not even permitted to see the events. When we recall the plagues against Egypt, we remove a drop of wine, our symbol of joy, from our wine cups for each plague because our joy is lessened when we remember the sufferings of the Egyptians. Together, let us recall the 10th plague against Egypt. Blood, Dom. Frogs, Spardea. Lice, Kinim. Insects, Aro. Cattle disease, Dever. Boils, Shechim. Hail, Barad. Locusts, Arbe, Darkness, Koshech, and the slaying of the firstborn, Makat Bechogot. The Jews left Egypt at midnight in such a hurry that they did not have time to let their bread rise. They baked it immediately and it came out flat and hard, the first matzah. Our people escaped to the Red Sea with the Egyptians in hot pursuit. Rabbi Judah says, when the Israelites stood at the shore of the Red Sea, one said, I do not want to go down to the sea first. Another said, I do not want to go down to the sea first either. While they were standing there deliberating, Nakshon, the um, son of Amon Gav, leaped up, ran down to the shore, and jumped into the swirling waters. The waters rose around him and he began to drown. At the same time, God stood. Moses stood reciting long prayers before the Holy One. God said, said to him, Moses, my friend, is, my friend is sinking in the water and the sea is closing in upon him. The enemy is pursuing and you stand there reciting long prayers. Moses said before God, ruler of the universe, what else can I do? God replied, lift up your rod. Moses lifted the rod. 
the water is parted, and the Israelites crossed over on dry land. Salvation comes to those who work together with God to bring it. From the Reed Sea, our people traveled on to Mount Sinai, where God gave them the Torah. At Sinai, we entered into our covenant with God, which sustains us to this day and teaches us to cherish a vision of the world free of Pharaoh's slavery and plagues. God did many wonders, wonderful things for us. God brought us out of Egypt, gave us the Shabbat, gave us the Torah, and brought us into the land of Israel. Any one of these would have been enough. Therefore, we sing Dayenu, which means it would have been enough for us. Well, we all know Dayenu. It is really long. We're going to do a little bit of an abbreviated version of it. And then maybe you can add some of your own thoughts about um, how we feel redemption in our own age, how God has freed you to be the person you are today. Elu, Elu, Hotsianu, Hotsianu, Mimi, Trahim, Hotsianu, Mimi, Trahim, Dayenu, Day, Dayenu, Day, Dayenu, Day, Dayenu, 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 Elu, Natan, Natan, Lanu, Natan, Lanu, Eta, Shabbat, Natan, Lanu, Eta, Shabbat, Dayenu. And we say in English, had God only taken us out of Egypt, we say, Dayenu, it would have been enough for us. Had God only given us Shabbat, Dayenu, it would have been enough for us. Had God only given us the Torah, Dayenu, it would have been enough for us. But no, God gave us freedom and Torah and Shabbat and the land and the opportunity to be together tonight. Okay, let's Second go. cup of wine. Midrash relates that when the Egyptians were drowned in the Reed Sea, the angels wished to join the Isra in Israel's song of victory by singing <coughs> hallelujah. That God rebuked them saying, how can you sing hallelujah when my creatures are drowning? In this spirit, we fill our second cup of wine only halfway. Our gladness is diminished by our, any human suffering even the suffering of our enemies. So the second cup of wine symbolizes intellectual freedom, freedom of the mind. Closed minds lead to misunderstanding and human suffering. We need to open our minds to new ideas and to try to understand the ideas and beliefs of others. Knowledge and understanding will lead to greater freedom for everyone in our world. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei puri hagafen Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Rabban Gamliel, one of our great sages of the early rabbinic period, immediately after the destruction of the temple, Rabbi Gamliel said, we have not fulfilled our duty at the Passover Seder until we have explained these three symbols, Pesach, Matzah, and Maror. Now, the Pesach we actually don't have because that was the, the actual shank bone of the lamb, and we don't happen to have one on the Seder plate. Um, I'm going to hold this up just so we have something to hold up, but we're going to talk about it a little bit later. So, what is the meaning of the shank bone? The shank bone reminds us of the lamb, which our people sacrificed to the God the night they left Egypt. In family groups, our people ate the Paschal lamb while the temple in Jerusalem was still standing. Tonight, we celebrate Pesach with family, friends, and community in all of our homes. Why was the lamb chosen for sacrifice? Because this is the animal that the Egyptians worship. The shank bone on our Seder plate 
symbolizes our rejection of idolatry. Idolatry has taken a different form in every age. In our own time, we have witnessed the results of idolatry when people place complete, unquestioning faith in someone or something other than God. This occurred in Germany with 11 million souls, including six of our own, own people, were tragically and cruelly lost. The presence of a shank bone on our Seder plate reminds us of our own obligation to combat idolatry whenever and wherever we encounter it in order to ensure the spiritual freedom of all. Matzah. What is the meaning of the matzah? Matzah reminds us of the dough our people baked that night they left Egypt. We left in such a hurry that we don't have time to allow the bread to rise, the dough to rise. So we have uh, normally on Shabbat, how many blessings do we do over our bread? Yeah, just the one, right? Well, this is special bread that we eat only at a special time of the year. And so we have two blessings. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And a second one. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu Bamitzvotah Vitzivanu Al Achilat Matzah Blessed are you, our God, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy with commandments and commands us to eat the matzah. So, we have another symbol on our Seder plate, which is the maror, in this case, horseradish. What is the meaning of the maror? It is bitter and eating it makes us cry. On Passover, we try to feel the bitterness of slavery and shed the tears of our people shed when they were enslaved in Egypt. The whole dor vador chayav adam lirot et atzmo ke'ilu hu yatsami mitzrayim. In each and every generation, each person should feel as though he or she went forth from Egypt, as our Torah teaches. And you shall explain to your child on that day it is because of what God did for me when I myself went forth from Egypt. John? Mm -hmm. Not only our ancestors alone did the Holy One redeem, but us along with them as it is written, and God freed us from Egypt so as to take us and give us the land that God has sworn to give our ancestors. Okay, we're gonna try a little bit. This is very fresh horseradish that Don just brought home. So he likes it a lot better than I do. We'll see how this goes. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al achilat maror. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy with commandments and commands us to eat maror. It's fresh. It is. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. I love him. Yeah. So, so we're gonna do one more thing that okay. we're gonna eat. Um, so there's this tradition of what we call the Hillel sandwich. Hillel, the elder, was one of our great sages almost 2,000 years ago. And he had the custom of making a sandwich, a maror sandwich, which I know you would love. Um, and so we eat the maror of slavery together with the matzah of freedom. In times of slavery, there's always the hope of freedom. In times of freedom, there's always the memory of slavery. So we're going to do a little matzah sandwich here right now. And we're actually going to add a little bit of haroset to it. This is the, um, the apple and nuts and honey and wine mixture. And basically, it's, it acts as the bonding agent, right? It's, it's like the, the mortar that we used when we built all those um, huge buildings, um, those edifices for the Pharaoh of Egypt. Um, and it, it, again, it's a reminder, it's sweet, so it has to do with freedom, but it reminds us of 
the bitterness and the degradation and the servitude of Egypt. Now, I want to talk about a couple more things that are on the Seder plate. This is the time period when people would typically eat their meals. And so if you want to stop the video now, you can stop and eat your meal and then come back to the end part after your meal is over, or we can just keep going here. On our Seder plate, we have a couple of other things. One is the roasted egg. The egg is a symbol of fertility. It's a symbol of spring. It's a symbol of life and the cycle of life. And it reminds us that even in the darkness, even at times of despair and death, um, times that we're really suffering through now, um, hope and, and light um, eventually come through. We also have an orange on the Seder plate. Um, and we have had one at our congregational seders also for many years. Um, there's a lot of urban, what do they call them? Urban legends. Urban legends having to do with, <laughs> well, with the orange on the seder plate. Um, it was um, originally came out of the LGBT community um, and later was adapted by a lot of feminist groups and women seders who sort of absconded with it. Um, and, and that's what upsets me because it, it kind of led to two groups whose voices have not been heard in the Jewish tradition, kind of fighting among themselves over, um, whose symbol this really is. And I'm going to say it's everybody's. Anybody who has had, um, who is, is part of a minority, who is part of an oppressed group, anybody whose voice has not been heard by our tradition, um, who's whose feelings and whose um, special situations, whose unique degradations um, have not been um, recognized and appreciated and respected and, and changed. Um, the orange is for all of us, all of you. Um, originally, the story was that somebody came up with the, the saying once that, uh, that LGBT people belong in Judaism about as much as a piece of bread belongs on a Seder plate. Well, a piece of bread was kind of going too far as a symbol, and that's where the orange came into being. And then uh, it became a symbol in feminist circles, too, where we said, you know, that it, it, it happened one time, and apparently this is the urban legend part, um, that a man stood up at, uh, at, a, at a congregational event where they were celebrating the coming of, of women into positions of leadership in Judaism and said, a woman belongs on a bima about as much as an orange belongs on the Seder plate. Well, the truth of the matter is we all belong at the Seder table and we all have suffered um, from some sort of narrowness. The, the word for Egypt um, in, 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 he, in Hebrew comes from the word for narrow straits. We have all had our Egypt. We've all come through narrow straits and we all deserve to have our symbol uh, on the Seder plate because it is a symbol of inclusion and the, the broadness and, and sharing the joy and the sweetness of um, the great beauty of all of the Jewish people all over the world. So you might be having your meal at this point. Um, and after the meal, we always praise God. You know, we've done all these blessings beforehand. And when you're hungry, it's, it's easy to remember to thank God. Um, we do our blessing after meals because sometimes you kind of forget. And we have to make sure that we do that. And I just want to do a really brief one. And you can say it. You can repeat it after me. Um, Baruch Ata Adonai. Hazan et hakol, which basically thanks God for nourishing all of us. And all you have to say is, Amen. Amen. So now we're going to go 
to the afterward part. Um, although you can keep going here if you want to just get everything done before your meal, but we really like to kind of do things in order here. So after your Passover meal, we come to the third cup of wine. And the third cup of wine symbolizes spiritual freedom. Remember we said there were four kinds of freedom. There's physical freedom, intellectual freedom. The third cup is spiritual freedom. Our people has known the need for spiritual resistance in many ages. Even in the worst of circumstances, we have maintained our dignity and identity as Jews. Even in the concentration camps, many Jews scrupulously observed halakha, Jewish law, in defiance of the oppression that they suffered at the hands of the Nazis. One such Jew addressed this question to Rabbi Ephraim Oshri. Should a Jew having to perform forced labor for the Nazis continue to recite the benediction of the morning prayers, we praise you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has not made me a slave? And Rabbi Oshri responded, heaven forbid that we should give up reciting this blessing. On the contrary, now of all times, we are obliged to say this bracha, this blessing, so that our adversaries and tormentors realize that although we are in their, pow we are in their power to do with us as their wicked machinations devise, we nonetheless perceive ourselves not as slaves, but as free people prisoners for the time being, whose liberation will soon come. How to seek the spiritual freedom that generations before us sacrificed to maintain. Let us open our hearts and minds to experience God in our own lives. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Puri HaGahopin Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Now, tradition holds that we reserve a cup of, a special cup of wine for a special visitor, the prophet Elijah. And that's what this cup is for. And each Seder, we open our doors so that the spirit of Elijah may enter our homes and our lives. According to one legend, Elijah takes a drop of wine from every Seder in the world, bottles all the wine, and distributes the bottles to Jews who are too poor to buy wine for their own Seder. Elijah's cup represents the promise of messianic freedom. It symbolizes a time that has not yet come, but for which we yearn and pray. The cup of Elijah is a cup from which we cannot drink until the redemption is complete, until the world is whole and at peace, until peace and compassion reign, where corruption and bigotry now hold sway. Unless we despair of that time ever arriving, let us take hope from the words of a child who had no reason to hope, yet did. That's the difficulty in these times. Ideals, dreams, and cherished hopes rise within us only to meet the horrible truth and be shattered. It's really a wonder that I haven't dropped all my ideals because they seem so absurd and impossible to carry out. Yet I keep them because in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the ever approaching thunder, which will destroy us too. I can feel the suffering of millions. And yet if I look into the heavens, I think that it will come out all right, that this cruelty too will end and that peace and tranquility will return again. In the meantime, I must uphold my ideals for perhaps the time will come when I shall be able to carry them out. And of course, this comes from the diary of Anne Frank. Generations that came before us feared to open their doors. Elijah, we welcome you into our homes and into our hearts. May our message of a world redeemed from pain, injustice, and hatred inspire us to become God's partner and bring closer to the messianic age. So we're going to open the door now. Don, would you open the door for yes. the prophet Elijah as we sing? Eliyahu <laughs> Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, 
Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi, Bimhera Vyamenu, Yavo Lehinu, Imoshi Ben David, Imoshi Ben David. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Artie, for helping to open the door. Now we have a second cup here. And again, this is a fairly new tradition. We also honor the prophet Miriam by setting aside a cup of water, a reminder of the miraculous well that Midrash tells us accompanied the Israelites throughout the wilderness. Miriam's account. The well was the source of life and strength and optimism. May we draw strength and courage from the memory of Miriam's well. In remembering Miriam, we say, O oh God, creator of the universe, you bless us abundantly. You sustain us, your creatures, with life-giving water, and you sustain us, the Jewish people, with Mayim Kain, the life-giving waters of Torah. May we draw wisdom and compassion from the well of Torah to share with the world. Now, before we go to our fourth cup of wine in our conclusion, this is the kind of point, the, the thing about a Passover Seder is everybody's having so much fun, we don't want it to end. We just want it to keep going and going and going. And so over the generations, our, our, our people, our, our communities have created little songs and stories that kind of build up and get longer and longer and longer to try and keep us at the Seder table. So we're gonna do a couple of them here. Um, these are much abbreviated versions. These are sort of the longest things that you do at the end, you kind of build up to it. And a lot of you in your Haggadahs have the whole thing. These are songs that we do usually do at our community, our congregational Passover Seder. And we all take turns to see how much um, air we have left over to make this happen. So um, I don't know, Don, do you want to try the first one if I call it out? Sure. You're supposed to do it all in one breath. We'll see how this goes. And this is the song, Who Knows One, but we're going to do Who Knows 13. Who knows 13? I know 13. 13 are the attributes of God, 12 of the tribes of Israel, 11 of the Tsars in Egypt's dream, 10 commandments were given on Sinai, 9 is the number of the holidays, 8 are the days of the service, the covenant, 7 days there will, are in a week, 6 sections, the Torah, the Midrash has, Mishnah has, 5 books are on the Torah, 4 are the number of the matriarchs, 3 are the numbers of the patriarchs, 2 are the tables of the covenant, 1 is God in heaven and earth, and Ooh, 2 for us. That's okay, you did great. And then we also know the song, Hot God, yeah, Hot God, yeah. And the end of it is, again, it's kind of just a goofy song, but this is the way it goes. Then came the Holy One, blessed be God, and destroyed the angel of death, that slew the butcher, that killed the ox, that drank the water, that quenched the fire, that burned the stick, that beat the dog, that bit the cat, that my, ate my kid, my father bought for two Zuzim. Hot God, yeah, hot God, yeah. Fourth cup of wine. As our Seder draws to an end, we take up our cups one last time. Redemption is not yet complete. Not everyone in our world is yet free. This fourth cup reminds us of our responsibility to be God's partners and bring freedom to those who are enslaved, peace to those at war, food to those with hunger. This is our purpose as Jews. May we live to fulfill it. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Orei Blessed are you Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Our Seder service is now concluded. Its rites observed and purposes revealed. As we have gathered together as we can this year to celebrate the Seder tonight, may we be worthy to celebrate again in freedom and God willing together next year. And may God who redeemed our ancestors from slavery and degradation redeem all who are enslaved 
and bring freedom and dignity to our entire world. And may we be God's partners in bringing redemption, as together we say, Lishana Haba'a Berushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. May this be the plan for our future as we say together, Amen. Amen. We wish everyone a wonderful, beautiful Passover. We will stay in touch as best we can, but please feel free to share these thoughts and these prayers with your own family around your own Seder table uh, as we embark on this Sman Herotenu, this celebration of our festival of our redemption of our freedom. Next year, God willing, in Jerusalem, but if not, together, together in Altoona or wherever we may be.